Welcome everybody. It's been a very long time since my last video, so I thought I would take some time today. I've got a bit of time available, and I thought I would uh, give you guys a quick tutorial on a couple of things. I have had one person in my Discord asking a question. How do you get one signal and not multiple signals at a time? Uh, or thereabouts. So, uh, Trader, this is for you. Uh, hopefully this will answer a couple of questions for a lot of people. Some of you may even learn something new. So let's jump into the chart. Where are we today? Today is the 6th of June at 2019. And let's see, Bitcoin's had a little pullback, which is nice and healthy. However, I would love to see it come down to about uh, 62 or thereabouts. Maybe even down here. So let's just see what happens with that. Anyway, let's jump into it. Uh, what we'll do is uh, I'm going to throw up a very quick uh, RSI. I'm, I'm basically, what I'm going to do is, first of all, show you a very basic RSI indicator. All right, How do you make an RSI indicator? So here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to title this RSI. Oh, actually, let's just start again. Let's go new and blank indicator script. Yeah, yes, I've got unsafe changes, that's right. So here we go. My RSI script. And let's give us a bit of room. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with, uh, we need to create the RSI, uh, the, or a value of the RSI. So I'm just going to create a variable called RSI. And I'm going to make that equal, and I'm not going to bother at this stage with the inputs, and which I will eventually do, but at this stage, we're just going to make an RSI. We're going to call the function RSI through TradingView. It requires two parameters. What are we using as the data point? So I'm going to use the close or the closing price. And what length? Um, we're going to just put standard 14. All right, and if you hover over the RSI function, there we go, RSI, X and Y, and it gives you a series of data points. So now let's just put this, let's grab the RSI variable and we'll just plot that. And let's uh, let's save. I doubt we'll have any uh, errors at this stage. Oh, my RSI script, yes, let's call it that. And let's add it to the chart. It's compiling, boom, and there it is. All right, so let's get rid of volume. So we just have candles and RSI. So there we go. There is the RSI on 14, well, we're on the daily, so it's a 14 period, uh, 14 day RSI. And boom, there it is. Pretty boring stuff. So let's, <clears throat> let's add a little bit to it. First of all, I want to have some sort of reference point. What's oversold, what's overbought. So let's create a horizontal line or H line and we'll give it a value of 70. And uh, using shift and alt with arrow, uh, down arrow, I'll copy that and I'll make that 30. And let's resave that. Let's see what that gives us. There we go. That gives us our over, overbought and oversold line. Now, just to make it a bit more exciting, let's go down to a one minute candle. So while I'm talking, you can see the action forming. Right. All right. So overbought, oversold. Uh, now, the other thing is the RSI line. That looks a little boring to me. For those who follow along, you know that uh, I prefer the RSI to be color coded yellow. Yeah, let's do this. We'll go, first of all, we'll title the plot line. Uh, title equals, in quotations, RSI line and let's make the color equal to the color yellow with zero transparency and while we're at it let's make the line with equal to two just so that you guys can see it a bit easier um, all right close the parenthesis there now let's resave and we should get a yellow line. There we go. Beautiful. Cool. So that's our that's our yellow line. Now that's pretty easy. That's uh, 
pretty easy stuff. Well, I guess the, the, the a basic strategy is you would buy when the RSI drops, you know, gets down to the oversold level, which is the bottom level. And you would want to sell when it starts getting above the top level. All right, so you'd buy low, sell high, assumably, presumably. So what if we wanted to look at the chart and identify exactly when those points are? So we're going to do that with a background color. So let's do this. Let's put it down here underneath. Now background color, the function background color is basically just B G C O O C O L O R background color. And that takes uh, the value, which would be green. I'm going to say green at the start. So I'm going to say color uh, green with a transparency. Now I want it to be slightly transparent. So I'm going to give it a 50% transparency. And uh, now we need to have obviously a way to make that show up sometimes and not show up most of the time because we only want this to be painting a green horizontal background color when the RSI is underneath the lower level or the lower horizontal line which I've set at 30. So we need a condition. Uh, and so the condition is going to be using a ternary condition. All right, and for those who don't know what a ternary condition is, seen one of my previous videos. I have done a previous video. In fact, if I can figure out this uh, the YouTube thing, it might be popping up. This my little arrow. Here we go. It might be popping up somewhere up here, and then it's probably going to disappear about now. Anyway. Um, I'll see if I can get, make that happen. Otherwise, I will edit this whole section out. What we shall do is we need to have a condition, and I'm going to say it's a long condition. So I'm creating a variable called long, and I'm going to make that equal to, and it's going to be a Boolean value. In other words, it's either true or it's false. It's never anything else. So we want the condition to be when the RSI is less than 30. All right. And then we take the long condition and we put it, we, we make the color plotting of the background color. We're going to make this a ternary condition. So we're going to say, is the condition long? Is, is the condition long? All right. That's basically saying, is this true? If it is, all right. So the question mark is, is it true? If it is, then we want you to plot the color green. If it's not true, so in other words, it's false, then I want not applicable. Don't paint anything. So let's see what happens with that. And there we go. So when the RSI value drops below 30, it paints it green. Easy enough. So let's now do exactly the same thing. Let's make long condition, short condition, and we want the RSI to be greater than 70, which means I'm now going to copy this line. I'm going to copy the short variable and put it in there. So is it short? Let's paint it maroon so we can see what's going on. It can still have a 50% transparency if I save that. Here we go, and there we go. So now we've got some red lines and some green lines. So, you know, presumably you would buy here, you might buy there and buy there, and then you'd sell there, and you would have made some profit. That's probably within uh, in one hour and 32 minutes, you made 2.75%. That's not bad. I guess, but you know, then again, I'm not saying the strategy is going to be profitable. By all means, this is not uh, this is not a way to write a profitable strategy. That's on you guys. What I'm doing here is just showing you uh, what you, how you can go about creating a script that you can tweak and refine in your own time. So 
we've got the bare bones of being able to see when something's overbought and when something's oversold, but we can't really do anything about it. All we can do is change the colors, but we can't sort of fine tune it. So what we're going to do is if you see here, I'm hard coding 70 as the value for the horizontal line, and then I'm hard coding again the same value for the condition of short and vice versa for long. So let's create an input variable so that we can change these values ourselves. Okay. Now to do that, I'm going to first of all, I'm going to start with the RSI because 14, although it's a standard kind of length, we might want to adjust it. So let's go create a bit more room. Let's call the this variable RSI underscore LEN for RSI length. And that's going to be equal to, now we want to have a user input. We want the user to be able to input whatever they want into this. So we're going to say input. We're going to open the parenthesis and we're going to give it a, a, a default value to start with. Now you could put in DEFVAL equals 14 and that would say the default value is 14. Um, I usually just save a bit of time, just go, there it is. The first, um, the first parameter is the default value. Next, let's give the user an idea of what this is. So we're going to go title equals RSI length. And just so the user doesn't screw anything up, we're going to say that the minimum value is equal to one. So it can't go below one, otherwise it's going to have some issues. Next, let's, we want these two lines. We want an upper line and a lower line. So just to make the variable um, short and concise, I'm going to use capitals. I'm going to go UL for upper line. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to take what I've already written and copy it and then change the variable name to UL. And I'm going to make the default value 70. And I'm going to change that to upper level. And the minimum value can be, oh, that can be probably be, uh, you know, it could just stay as one. All right, now I will copy that again. And this time I'll call it a lower line or lower level, LL. And it will be 30 and lower. All right, so now I've got 70 hard coded into a variable, which I can then use that variable instead of hard coding it there and there, and then the lower level there and there, and the RSI length can go there. So now if I hit save, the indicator should look identical and let it do its thing. There we go. It does look identical. But now when we go, we have inputs. So now I can change the length of the RSI, which obviously affects the outcome. Uh, let's put that back to 14. And I can change the upper level. See if we look, if we look at this horizontal line, it's going up and it's going down. So there we go. The lower it goes, the more red signals you get. And the lower you put the lower level, the less green signals, or the higher, the more green signals. So that would be ridiculous. Uh, now, just as a quick side point, if you wanted the, say, for example, you wanted 70 and 30 to be a little bit more granular, you could use another a parameter of the input variable called step and just for argument's sake let's go step equals let's go 0 0.1 okay and actually I'll just leave it on the upper line and I'll go save so now it's gonna look identical but watch what happens now when I want to scroll up very very granular so now I'm scrolling like crazy and I've still only got to 75 all right so that's can be handy 
if I was to change that to uh, say two, save, and go back into it. Now it's going by it's going up by twos. So whether that's helpful or not, if you didn't know about it, now you do. It's not really relevant for now though. Okay, moving right along. Okay. Here comes the crux of it. Let's say you wanted, now let's see, let's say you wanted to be sent an email when the con condition for going long was true. Okay, that would be kind of handy. So it's fairly easy to do. Uh, what we would do is we would go alert condition. Oh, actually, for starters, uh, let's just get rid of that and save that. What you can do is, if we go into the alert box and create a new alert, and we select for the condition, we want to select the our script here, my RSI script. And as you can see, you've got we've got crossing. Crossing up, crossing down, greater than, less than, entering, blah, 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 blah. So let's say uh, we wanted to go less than value of um, 30. Okay. And once, uh, actually once per bar closed, that, no, actually let's go once per bar. All right. And open ended. Uh, let's say we wanted to be sent. Oh, obviously sent an email. Uh, you could, if you were watching the screen, you could play a sound. You know, you could make it chirpy. Oh, I don't know if you heard that or not. I did, but yeah, I'm going to take that off anyway. So it's open ended, meaning this alert will exist forever until you turn it off. Uh, if you're on a free account, you probably don't have that option. Uh, I have the TradingView app on my phone, so you could actually check that and it would show up on your phone, which could be handy. Uh, pop up, it'll pop up and alert on your screen. Uh, but what I would probably do is say notify on app is usually the better option. If it fires now, you won't see it. But yeah, that's not really the point. Uh, and then in here, the message, you could say, um, say my RSI script has uh, told me to buy. There you go, and then you create the alert, and the alert shows up here. Oh, on the one minute, goodness me, so I would get bothered a lot, as, well, not a lot, but it would, it would notify me a lot. However, now I could come along, and I should be able to, say, increase or decrease the length, to say two, like that, and there. Now it's going to go absolutely nuts. And if I go into here and change this again, doo -doo -doo -doo, yep, save that. Now it's probably going to alert me every minute, every time it goes underneath, and it's not going to be great. So I'm actually going to delete that right now. Boom. Get out of there. All right. And let's just put that up to something a bit more realistic for now. Okay. So the alert condition is you can do the same thing, but you can do your own condition. So that one was less than 30. We're going to code in our own condition. So to do that, we use the function alert condition, all one word. And the alert condition takes three parameters. The first parameter, if we hover over the word, the first parameter is condition. So it needs to be a true or a false um, Boolean value. If it's true, the alert condition becomes true and it alerts if you've selected it. And if it's false, then it doesn't. So we're going to have long as the condition, uh, the title, is going to be what you would see in the menu when you drop down to select whatever condition you want. We're going to call this uh, 
by uh, by now. All right. And then that little message box, message, is equal to, and this is what you're actually going to tell yourself in the message. This is what would show up in your email. Um, buy the hell out of this now. Brother. Exclamation yeah. And smiley face. All right. So now if I hit save, boom. And it does its thing. So let's say we want to create an alert condition. Now we want to select our script. But now we have buy now. Now we have this condition that we can choose. I'll select that. And here in the message, buy the hell out of this now, brother. Smiley face. So that's what we get messaged to us. Okay. And let's just cancel that. Now, obviously, we would want to have a condition that tells us short. And we could call that sell now. And then sell the heck out of this now, sister. Be grammatically correct and capitalized proper. Okay, however, let's have a look at this area here. The RSI got over the 70 for this candle and this candle. And then again, there, there, and there. So there was five selling signals within, I guess that was seven candles, six candles, six candles. So in six minutes, if you are looking at the one minute chart, obviously, six periods, you got one, two, you got five sell signals, and that might just be a little bit too much. Maybe you just want the one. Um, so let's change the, condi the, the condition. So we're going to change the long condition to instead of the RSI being lower than the lower level, we're going to make it cross. Okay? So we're going to take out that and we're going to say cross over. Okay, so what we're wanting is we want RSI to go let's say where are you? Give me give me an give me a blue, a green. There we go. So we want you know if if the price is tanking, it may stay underneath 30 for a while. We want to know when it goes back up again. So rather than rather than buying here, we want to buy once it reverses. So it's got to cross over that lower level. So the alert, so the condition looks like this: cross over, and cross over takes two conditions: the RSI value. So we want the RSI value to cross over. The lower line. All right, and then the same thing for the short condition. If I just copy that, throw it in there. Boom. We want cross under. Now the other way you could do this is you could either have cross over and use the upper line crossing over the RSI, but that's just a little bit um, weird thinking. Uh, if that's your thing. So we're going to say cross under. So we're still we're looking at the the RSI line is now going to cross under the upper level. Okay. So what we should now have, if we save, is those large areas should become one candle wide each. There. So there we go. It crossed under. It crossed under. It crossed over. So on this period it's below, and this period it's above. All right, so that's that's cleaned it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got multiple buy signals here, and if that's if that's what your strategy is, if you rather than buying all at once, you're wanting to sort of cost your average in. This is a way you could do it. You could buy a little bit here, and then buy a little bit here, and buy a little bit here, and then sell a bit there, sell a bit there, and Buy a bit and sell a bit, yeah? 
you could you could try that. It's up to you. <clears throat> so, where have we? What have we got covered so far? We've covered. Uh, we've, well, we've, we've created an RSI. We've given ourselves uh, input variables. We've plotted horizontal lines. Now we haven't coloured them, but um, yeah, I've covered that in other videos. Uh, created the RSI. We've plotted the RSI. And now we've told ourselves when it's you know, time to buy and when it's time to sell. We have colored the, the chart when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. And we've created an alert condition so that we can get it sent an email or a pop-up or whatever when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. Great. However, let's suppose that somebody out there, some smart cookie has figured out a way that rather than doing the dollar cost averaging in, they might combine a few other little magic ingredient indicators calculations and they want to time a specific point in time and just go all in at that time. All right? So they don't want to have a buy signal and a buy signal and a buy signal. They want to have a buy signal, then a sell signal. And a buy, and a sell. Buy, sell. Buy, sell. So flip, flop, flip, flop, flip, flop. No, that's what they're after. So what we need to do is we need trading view. We need the code to say, if we're in a long position, don't give me any more long signals. I'm only after the sell signals. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> now, it could be a little bit tricky. It's going to use ternary conditions. Um, and so just sort of follow along. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll try and finish this coffee. So what we're going to call, I'm going to call this a non-repeating alert. All right. And for those following along, I'm going to go put it down here. Just give it a bit of room. Yeah, no, not that one. There. And it's going to be called, uh, comment this out, non repeating alert. Okay. Now, for starters, <clears throat> I'm going to keep the same signal, the same uh, condition. So these are our long and short conditions. They are fine. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something between creating the condition and painting the condition. All right. So we've got to have a little bit of extra code in here. So just to just to uh, you know, help facilitate the learning, uh, this is a Boolean value. So true or false? Sorry, not value. Condition. Uh, condition for going long, for going long. And then this one, this the short. The Boolean condition for going short. <clears throat> okay. So what we need is because every single candle that gets painted on the screen is like it's like a newborn. It has no memory of what's happened. It doesn't know what's occurred one candle previous. All it's doing is every single candle that's going through this this chart is following this story down here. It's just following the script. Every single chart. The RSI gets an RSI length and it plots it and it calculates it and it does its thing for each candle. It's either long or short. It needs to know what's happened previous. So for that to happen, the current candle needs to be given memory it needs to know it needs to know history it needs to know what happened before it existed what happened back there so what we're going to do is we're going to have a long position and we're going to have a short position okay so uh, let's call this long pause for position mem this is just a variable name that I've come up with. It's up to you what you want to 
could call it, but long position memory. And we're going to, at this state, stage, we're just going to say this is equal to false. It is This position is false. Okay? And while I'm at it, short position memory. That is also false. So at this point in time, we have declared the variable and given it a value of false. Now what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to change those variable values depending on what's going on right now. Okay, so we're going to start with long position memory. And we're going to say long position memory, although it was given a false value here, we are, it is now equal, that's how I like to say, colon equal means that you're now going to change the value of what's stored in there. All right, and that's why we first gave it the value of false because I'm using version 3 in the code. I'm using version 3 of the code, meaning I have to declare the variable first if I want to change it. All right, I, th I believe in version 2, I could have just said long position memory equals what it was. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to be referring to this variable on a previous candle. All right, and that's why I've had to give it the memory to be able to hold that value. So here's what we're going to do. <clears throat> The long position memory is going to be true if our long condition. Okay, so did, did we get a crossover of the RSI and the lower level? Did we get a buy signal or a long? So question mark, this is the ternary condition. So is it long? Then we want to store the, a true value into this value into this variable. So we're going to say true. So in other words, long position memory, which was false, are we in a long position? Do, did we just get a long signal? If so, then long position memory gets switched from false to true. But if we did not get the signal, so for example, if in this candle here, we didn't get it, what else can we do? So we put the second side of the ternary condition. What happens if it's not true? Or false, what happens if it's false? Did we not get a buy signal? Well, maybe we got a short signal. Maybe it's a sell. All right. But because we are looking at going long on this variable, we want to be out, if, it, if we were true, it's got to be false. So, did we get a short signal? And this is now starting a new ternary condition. So this is a inception style ternary condition. So it's a ternary condition within a ternary condition. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, calm down. All right, so we're going to now, if we get a short signal, then we don't want to be going long. So therefore, we're going to say false. Okay, and then we need the last part of this ternary condition. All right, so we need a, a false side of that. All right, so recapping up till now, we create a variable that is all about going long. All right, we haven't started this one yet. We're creating some memory, and we are remembering the value false. Then we get to here and we go, you know what, let's just do this. Just so we can focus one thing at a time. Cool. All right. So the long position memory is false, but then we're going to change it to something else. Now, we want to change it to true if we have just got a brand new long signal. In other words, the RSI, the, the condition that we are choosing to go long on has become true, therefore our memory is now true. But if on the current candle that we're calculating on has not had a long signal, e.g. it's false, then we don't want to have 
a true value. We're now going to test it. Have we just received a short signal? Is it time to sell? In other words, if it's time to sell, if that's true, well then it's definitely not time to go long, so therefore long would be false. However, if it's neither long nor short, in other words, it's not below and crossed over, and it's not above and crossed down, we're somewhere in the middle ground, we're somewhere we're not doing one of those conditions, then we don't want to do anything. And this is the key part of this particular technique. We want to know, well, if, if nothing's changed, what were we doing on the previous candle? What, what was our state of affairs? And all we're going to do is we're going to reference the same variable, long position memory, one period ago. So on the previous candle, let's say the previous candle, so it's not a great example, but you know, let's just imagine here, guys. Let's say on this candle, we got a long signal and we went true. It was like green, we're in a long position. And then we get to this candle and it's neither. It's neither long nor short. It's it's just it's heading on its way up. We're in a long position. We've bought we've bought our crypto. We're we're going long, guys. What happens then is that the current candle, well, it's not it's not a long signal because that was the previous candle, and it's not a short signal because we haven't gone short. So therefore, what did we do? What position were we in on the previous candle? And on the previous candle, we were long. So therefore, we stay long. All right. So this is basically saying, stay in the position we were at. Now, let's bring the short side of the equation into it. Now, I'm going to bring that back up and bring that one back down. And this is basically the, exactly the same technique, only it's in reverse. Okay. So I'm going to copy this line. We're going to give this the short position memory and this is essentially this the same thing did we just get a short signal then it's true otherwise did we get a long signal well then it's false otherwise short position memory previous but there is one more part of the equation to satisfy here I'm now going to introduce the final signal of when to do it. All right, and I'm going to call this variable buy. And this is the actual variable that will drive the conditions. All right, the, the alerts, the, the background color, these are what is actually going to be the condition you use to paint the background colors and the alerts. All right, so buy, the variable buy is equal to a long condition and not long pause mem of one period ago. Whoops. One period ago. There we go. All right. So, and now we just do the, the cell version as well. Cell is equal to short and not short position memory one. Now, let me explain this and break it down what's going on here. The buy variable is going to be true. If this condition and this condition are true, because we're using the AND to join two conditions together, then both sides of the, of the AND have to be true for the whole thing to be equal to true and for the, the true value to be stored in the by variable. So long has to be true. In other words, we have just immediately received 
a long signal on the current candle that we're calculating. That now becomes true. And the long position memory, like the which direction are we trading, was not true on the previous candle. Okay, so we cannot be in a long position. So not we are not long already, and the current candle we are now. That is the buy signal. Because we are wanting a flip-flop kind of a, a situation. If we are already long, we don't want to be long again. But if we are not long, and then we get the signal to go long, then that's what we're after. And that's what this does. So we get a, a brand new signal to buy, and we check backwards in time to make sure that we are not in a long position. And if both of those are satisfied, then we get a buy signal to be true. And then that buy signal paints the green color and it alerts for the alert condition. Same thing on the short condition. If we get a brand new signal to sell <clears throat> and we check back in time, and the back in time part is referring to the one index here, that's going one candle backwards. If we are the short condition, we are not in a short condition, and now we are in a short condition, then the sell signal becomes true. That's what paints the background color, and that's what alerts us. So now if I hit save, and it does that, there we go. All right, there we go. So let's, uh, let's, okay, I don't know if you can see that very well, but there we go. So now we have a flip-flop, a, a, a buy there, and then a sell there. Let's go to maybe 15 minutes. Let's try and actually, let's speed that up a bit. Let's go to a seven period. Here we go. All right, so if we look at this, we have a buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. Now see here we bought, uh, so we bought there. Where to go? Yeah, so we bought here, and then it went down below again and crossed. So there we would have received a signal, but because we were already long because of this signal, then it doesn't alert because we are already long all the way through here. So that long position memory gets flipped to true, and each of these candles periods it stays as true because no other signal has happened. It's not gone short, so therefore it stays the previous one. Stay, 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 stay. All the way through here, it stays long. We are long, we are long, we are long. Long, 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 and then boom, now we get a brand new short signal, and now we're short, 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 short. Okay? So that's how you flip-flop your position. <clears throat> now you might be wondering, okay, great. Uh, how profitable was this? And what if we didn't want to know about, you know, a certain amount of time? So let's let's go to a, a six-hour candle. All right, and let's zoom all the way out. Do, do, do. Let's go. Uh, oh, let's turn that off. Um, let's go all the way back out here. Now this. Ideally, we say we're only going long. In other words, we would be interested in the market from about here onwards. We're, in, we're interested in the market from this point on, from a, you know, oh man, the computer's running slow. But all through the, say, the 2018 bear market, we didn't really want to go long. <clears throat> we went long. This is all bearish, yeah, and we 
say we didn't want a short market. All right. But now that we're in a bull market, now we want to start trying bullish strategies. So we don't care about all this. So what we want is a way to filter out based on time. Okay. And so what we're going to do is I'll show you a really great, uh, easy way to drop in some code. All right. <clears throat> now, what I'll actually do is if you're following along, I would suggest um, grab a you know, make a text file, throw it on your computer somewhere, somewhere that you can just grab this and drop it into your code anytime you like. So I'm going to put this right up at the start of the code. And it's going to take <clears throat> a few inputs. So let's just start with, uh, let's go, you know, get some sort of heading. Uh, let's call this, uh, we're going to input in a window range. Input window range. Actually, let's make it a little bit more you know, in your face. So caps lock. <laughs> Hardly ever use that. Input window range. Caps lock off. That was scary. All right. And then we'll just go drop it down a bit. And let's uh, go, um, and let's just close off that, like that. Okay, now, in here is the magic. We're going to create six variables, okay? The first variable is going to be called from day. And that's going to be equal to user input. And say the default value is going to be, let's say, 1. And the title of this will be from day. And we want to put some sort of restraints on this so the user doesn't screw it up. We're going to go the minimum value has to be equal to 1. And the maximum value has to be equal to 31 because this is effectively the day of the month. Now, we're going to have to assume the user has some level of intelligence that they don't try and put the 31st of February in it because that's just stupid. Anyway, so this is selecting the day of the month that we're you know, looking to filter it out. Okay. Now, if we've got a day, then we obviously need a month and we need a year. So let's make those and from a month. Now we start with day because day precedes the month and the month precedes the year, unless you're in some weird ass country that puts the month first. <coughs> USA. So from month. Uh, undo that, and this time only select the word month. And the maximum value obviously is going to be 12 because it's not 31 months in a year. And the from year, let's change that to year. And obviously the year, well, the maximum value, um, well, it doesn't really need a maximum value. It just needs a minimum value. So let's call the minimum value Oh, let's call it 2017. And let's then take out the max value part of things. All right, so that is from the day, from the month, from the year. Now let's do two. So I'm just going to take that whole block and copy it down. And we're going to go do, 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 two day to month, to year, and pretty much the same thing, but let's make the year way in the future. And in fact, to be honest, um, well, actually, let's just see what this looks like. It's not going to affect the code much at this stage. Do, do, where we go. Okay, so what this has done is if we go into the code and look into the inputs, this is what we've done here. 
first day of the first month of the okay that's an issue first from the that year so let's just fix that and default value can be let's call it 2018 and that's from the default value uh, 999 right let's try that now this is handy uh, this particular feat um, function I guess this is handy if you're wanting to if you want the from and the to that would mean that you could filter something in the past but not too far in the past so if you wanted to you could select you know this period of time and only test this go away, only test the strategy within this window whereas what I'm going to do at this point is I'm only concerned with you know starting uh, say starting I'll say starting here and you know trading all the way up to current current day so to save some space in my input window you see how there are six uh, yeah, variables here that I have to change. I don't really care about these three. I don't care about the which I haven't even named them properly yet. So let's do that. Two. Although this is kind of irrelevant, irrelevant with what I'm about to do. There we go. That's just for the user. So well let's save that. Uh, because it's using up space on the screen for putting in the two day, two month, two year, I don't need that. So I am going to put in my variables hard coded in. So I'm going to go uh, from the first day space and then comment out the rest of the line. There, there, and 9999 there. So, and just to make it look a little tidy, I'm just going to tab everything across. There. Okay, so now when I look at my input box, it is a little bit more concise. I have a from day, I have a from month, and I have a from year. Then I have my RSI, my upper, and my lower level. So that's all good. Now comes the point in time where we create the function so that we can call a way of filtering out our results. And to do that, we're going to create a variable called start. And I may as well make it tidy. And that is going to be using a function in TradingView called timestamp. And parenthesis so if we hover over the timestamp we have year month day hour minute all right or time zone year month day hour minute all right so it's basically it's going to deliver a value based on what hour minute you know day that we're giving it so all we have to do is we're going to give it a from year so the first one is year so we'll take from year that's our first parameter. We're going to have from month. Oops, yeah, let's stick a space in there just for the loveliness of it. And finishing with from day. And we're not really too concerned at the stage about the hour or the minute. But by all means, now that you're seeing what I'm doing here, you could add two more variables for the hour and the minute if you wanted to. But I'm just going to go 0, 0, comma, 0, 0. And that's my start variable. Same thing is going to be my finish variable. And we're going to go two year, two month, and two year, two day. Okay, so now we've got timestamps. And just so that we know what we're talking about, um, we'll comment this because it's always good to uh, comment our work start of window and of course end of window now now that we've got those two variables we're now going to create 
a function. And the function is going to be called window. And it's not going to take any parameters, but it is a function. So we're going to put empty parenthesis. We are also going to then use the function, uh, what would you call this, the way of coding a function, where we're going to go equals greater than, so it looks like a little arrow. And that is going to be e kind of like equal to time, all right, so which is a, a function within TradingView. So the current time, this is a current bar time in Unix format. All right, so these variables here, start and finish, are calling the timestamp um, function, and this returns a Unix time of the specified time var variables here. So time is going to be greater than or equal to this variable, the start, and at the same time, so and time is less than or equal to finish, which is this variable. And that's not spot right, so I'm just going to copy that and shove it in there. All right, so time, the current time is greater than when we want to start, but it's less than when we want to finish. If those two conditions are true, then our whole condition will be true. Otherwise, it's going to be false. Okay, and what this function does, let's comment our work again, uh, this creates um, the creates the function within window uh, of time. Okay, so when we call the function window, we are going to get either a true or a false value. And we will get a true value as long as the current time is greater than when we want to start our window and needs to be less than when we want to finish the window. Now, the when I say time, I'm not necessarily referring to the time that you would see if you looked at your watch. I'm not talking about that time. I'm not talking about the time that it is when you are actually experiencing life. I am referring to the time of whatever candle is calculating this code. Okay? Not here, but if you're back here, then this current time is what's being used here, which is why it creates the window. So now, let's show you what the way of doing this is, uh, how we're going to use this. Just to give you an example, we will we'll take the window function and we'll plot, we'll, we'll filter out the RSI. Okay, so let's go RSI, so let's go window, if that's true, then plot the RSI. Otherwise, don't plot anything. Let's see what happens. And, doo -doo -doo -doo, there we go. And, okay. Now, what date did I give it? First of the first 18. So let's, let's give it, um, actually for starters, let's go back to the daily view. All right. There we go. So you can see that the RSI, although it was being calculated back here, it only started plotting on the 1st of the 1st, 2018, right there. So then if I go into there and I go, let's go to February. Oh, we just lost some of the RSI there. March, April. 
So see how some of our R uh, the RSI is disappearing as I'm increasing the window. And now I could do it with the day. It's yeah, not moving very quickly, but anyway. So that allows us a f easy little function. Now I'm just going to uh, get rid of that now. And so, so for those following along at, at home, if you've just written this out with me, take that, all of that, copy that, and place it into a text file, store it away somewhere if you have your favorite scripts or something, call this the text file window function, or, or if you have a file that you've called your favorite functions, stick it in there. Because then once you've dropped that in at the beginning of your code, all you have to do is use this window function and you have a way of filtering out things. Now, how, how profitable is the strategy? Well, let's test it. And to do that, I'm going to turn this study into a strategy. Okay, and to do that, I'm going to do a little cheat. All right, so let's first of all uh, tidy up some of the code. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to take all of my code and actually, no, you know what? I don't need to. I'm just going to save it. All right, so we saved it. We have our code up here. I'm now going to go new blank strategy script rather than blank indicator script, blank strategy script. There we go. And I'm going to copy all of that, but I don't need the version three thing. So I'm just going to take that, copy that. And now I'm going to go back to my RSI script. And there are four little icons here, for those who don't know. The left one will show or hide that one. The second one will access your settings, like so. The third one is what I want. Don't click the fourth one, otherwise you'll get rid of your script. So the third one has these little brackets. If you click on that, you'll show the source code. And then we're back to where we were. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a bit of space and drop in that code I just copied. Now we need to move things around a bit. So first of all, we're going to move that to there. Now you can't have both of these lines um, active at the same time. Okay, so just be aware of that. So if I'm going to have a strategy, I can't run a study. If I'm going to have a study, I can't run a strategy. So I'm going to comment out control forward slash study line and I'm also going to take the these conditions uh, lines and I'm going to move them all the way down to the bottom of here oh, this is as far as it goes so let's create a bit more room well, this probably doesn't need that much room uh, let's delete some of those and just get some sort of dividing thing going on. So just to be aware while I'm here as well, plot, there we go. So this line, actually all of that, actually you know what, that, that can go there and that can go there. Okay, so I'm going to create some space around this because if I'm going to reuse this uh, script a bit and flip from study to strategy, you need to be aware of what to do. So if you are going to be using it in strategy mode, then you can't have study mode and the plot line should not be displayed. So if you're going to go, if you're going to comment out the study, you need to also comment out that section too. Okay. So now we are in study at uh, strategy mode. Now strategy is down here. Now we can see. Uh, let's add a bit more space. <clears throat> now here the we've got long condition 
and then we've got the condition for that. Now we already have our condition, which is buy or sell. Okay, so we don't need these lines. So I'll delete that. And of course, I don't need short condition either. So now we've got these if variables. Yeah, what is that doing there? Oh, hopefully I can delete that. Um, we don't need, we don't have long condition, we just have buy. So if the buy condition is true, then we're going to enter a position and we're going to call it my long entry ID and it's going to be a long, so we're going long. And then if we get a sell signal, then we're going to enter a short, which is essentially going to close out your long. So you're basically going to be flip-flopping. Now, there are other um, avenues out there to study, uh, to look up what strategy techniques and code there is. I may do another one. I may do a video on that down the track. Not just yet, but this is just a quick intro. So we have a buy signal. We have a sell signal. We have a lurk condition. Let's save that and... Uh, see what happens and there we go so by flip-flopping in this window of the first of the first 2018 we are let's see we're 2.95 percent profitable we did a total of 29 trades that's assuming we're trading on the one day candle uh, we are 51.72 percent profitable we have a profit factor of 1.544, maximum drawdown of 2.5%. don't know whether I like that or not. Uh, if we want to have a look at our performance summary, this is what all our trades look like. Gross profit, sorry, yeah. Gross profit, 8,367. So this really is going to depend on what, uh, what values you give it, what your default currency, your order size, if it's contracts or whether it's percentage of equity. You might want to do a 3% or say a 2% um, permitting one. Say so you might want to do point, point zero 0.05 commission, ugh, point zero 0.05 commission percent of the trade. Um, recalculate on every tick. Recalculate it after every order. I mean, these are just variables that you can just play with. It's up to you. Um, let's say it's in USD. Why not? So that may have changed uh, changed the values. Sure, crap. Look at that. Sure did. Negative 24%. So that's a really crap uh, strategy. But that's not the point of this. Um, let's go back to that because that looks much prettier. Anyway, uh, list of trades. There we go. A few losing ones. So like I said, this is not about uh, teaching you how to write a profitable strategy. This is just about how to write one. Um, so, recapping. This section, our window function, allows you to filter out areas of the chart and only test a certain part of the, the chart. Uh, we're, we're using an RSI, basic RSI strategy, uh, buying the oversold and selling the overbought. No, other way around. Yep, no, that's right. Uh, we created a flip-flop type of code where you didn't get repeating signals. All you got was a buy signal, and if you kept getting buy signals, you ignored them. And you only started getting signals if you got a short signal. So one buy for one sell. So flip-flop. And we painted the background color to visually show where the alerts would, would happen. We created alert conditions. So that if we wanted to, we could be sent an email or get alerted. And then we added this section down here, which was the strategy section. So if I wanted to un uh, comment that out, I could then re-comment this, put that back in. And take that back in and put that one out. And save. There we go. And boom. There we go. So now we've got back to our RSI, um, oh, actually, the window. Yeah, we didn't use the window, did we? Okay. Yeah. Pop the window into our buy condition and window. So now that we've done that, 
Let's just retest the strategy. Wow. Interesting. So, that didn't work. Oh, that's because. Huh. Let's do this. Let's do the. When do we want to start it from? Say. Somewhere in November. Let's say we got. Let's say the 10th of December 2018. Actually, let's do this. And put the 10th of December. There we go. So we got <laughs> one short signal. Yeah, maybe let's go down to say the hourly. Okay. Strategy tester. Okay, so that's still pretty crap. Anyway, uh, hopefully that this has shown you some techniques and tips and tricks and that sort of stuff. Uh, if you feel like jumping into the Discord uh, server, um, have a chat to whoever's there. Ask any questions you like from the people, from the members. If you've got something to share that you think might be helpful, there's uh, ways you can do that. Um, if you like this video enough and you feel like you want to buy me a coffee or just donate to the channel, help me out. There are some crypto links down below. And yeah, feel free to party on, basically. Alrighty, catch you all later guys, um, I will see you on the next flip side, flippening and uh, just remember, get yourself some Bitcoin. Later brothers and sisters.